In the previous videos, we took a look at what instant static meshes are and how they can help improve performance. We also took a look at how we could write an exporter for instant static meshes from Maya or from Blender so that you can export the positions of where you want to instance your static mesh from those softwares and be able to bring them into Unreal. So in this video, we're going to look at how we can actually take those files that we wrote an exporter for and be able to read them into Unreal to generate our instant static meshes scattered along those points or scattered along those positions that we exported. That way we can build more complex structures like this pillar here or these swirly pillars above or this giant hand structure that I just kind of made for fun. So this would be pretty difficult to, to build inside of Unreal directly. Um, but obviously in other softwares, we can scatter, uh, these, these bricks along some geometry and then just export out those points and read it in through, uh, instant static mesh loader in Unreal that we'll be making. So you can start to make these really complex structures really easily. And I think in this example here, you know, it runs really fast. It's pretty quick because it's fairly efficient. Um, since it is all instant static meshes, but it's about 12,000 duplicates uh, of that brick. And you can actually see here, this is kind of what the, the file looked like that I exported um, with that script that we wrote in the previous videos. So pretty cool. It's It allows us to have a much quicker workflow uh, with modular assets uh, between Unreal and Blender or Maya. So let's take a look at how we can start writing our importer or creating our importer through blueprint nodes that can read that file that we can now export from our Blender or Maya exporter. To create an importer in Unreal that will read in those files that we exported with our exporters from Maya and Blender, we'll have to read through the file and be able to instance our object to those locations. So if we take a look at that data file that our exporter writes out, it looks something like this, where we have a bunch of rows and columns. Each row is an object, and each column is a different property of that object, like it's TX, it's transform X, transform Y, transform Z, rotate XYZ, and scale XYZ. So we really just have to read through these values and instance our asset to these locations. So to be able to do that in Unreal, we're going to have to create a structure to handle these values. So the first thing that we're going to do in Unreal is we're going to go to our content browser and right click and go to blueprints and create a structure. This will allow us to read in that data file and have it follow a structure or a set of variables. So we're going to create a structure. And the structure is usually named with F underscore. So we want to name this correctly. So we can just call it like F underscore um, ISM import or something. Something that kind of describes uh, what we'll have to do. So once we've done that, we're going to open up this structure and make sure that we have slots for all the data. So this is where you can define what data the structure will consist of. So if we take a look at our uh, data file that we exported, we remember that there's quite a few things that we'll need storage for, like the transform XYZ, rotate XYZ, scale XYZ, and the ID. So we can start filling those in. So we'll do ID, and that will be, technically it could be integer, but we'll just put it as float for now. I just put everything as a, a floating point number, a number with many decimal places. So we're just going to quickly create these. And you could simplify this probably from what we're doing, but this is just going to be a very simple walk through it. So we're going to do ID, and then we're going to do transform XYZ, rotate XYZ, scale XYZ, and name all these. So TX, TY. TZ, RX, RY, RZ, and finally scale X, scale Y, and scale Z. 
and that's it. We've defined our structure. After we've done that, we're going to save this, and now we have our structure defined. And the reason why that's so important is now if we were to import our data file here, I'm just going to drag it into the content browser. It's going to ask you import as data table and what data table row type to follow, what structure to follow. So I'll click down here and I'll choose the structure that we just created, F ISM import, and then go apply. And now when it loads in that data table, if we double click on it, you can see that it has all the rows of many, many objects. And then also the ID, the transform XYZ, rotate XYZ, and scale XYZ. So it has all that info nicely ordered now. So we can now make a blueprint that will read this information out and instance our objects to those positions. So that's going to be the next step. So all we have to do now is create a blueprint that's going to be able to loop through that file. So this is where it gets a little bit more interesting. We're going to create a blueprint. So I'm going to right click, blueprints, blueprint class. I'll just make it an actor. It doesn't really matter right now. And I'll call it something like BP ISM loader. I'll double click on it to open it up. And here's our blueprint. And what we're going to do is pretty much ignore everything in here aside from add our instant static mesh. So I'm going to go add instanced static mesh. We can call it. In this case, I'm just going to use that, that brick static mesh. So it's just going to be um, something like SM for static mesh, brick. Load our static mesh here. So I'll just search brick. There it is. Now it's loaded in. And now what we want to do is instances brick to all those locations in that data file. So we're going to go to the construction script that you can find here as a tab. Um, or you can also find it by double clicking here, functions. So I'm just going to go to construction script in our blueprint and we'll get our graph. And I'll just give us a bit more room here to look at. So with our construction script, we're going to have to make a network that will read in that file. And that sounds confusing, but it's, it's really not anything too complicated. So we'll create a node called get data table row and we'll do the one that says get data table row names. So what that's going to do is when the construction script runs, when, which happens when this blueprint gets compiled or updated, it's going to run this and it's going to say get data table row names. What data table are we using? While well, we're using that, that data that I just imported, the file that we exported from, from Blender or Maya. So I can just choose it here, data. It's that same uh, data that we loaded in here. So that's what we're wanting to use there. And that's specifying what table it's going to be reading or what data it's going to be reading. And now we have to get uh, a list or kind of like a numbered list of how many items are in that data table. Because we need to loop through them, pull out the values and instance our, our mesh, our brick mesh to each one of those values. So we're going to do a for loop here. So we'll do for loop. There we go, for loop. Now the index starts at the very first entry of that data table. The last index is the very last entry in that data table. We can get the last entry or the last index of that data table, the very last number, how many entries are in that data table by just taking our row names and getting the length of how many rows there are and that becomes our last index. So it's starting at the first entry in that data table and stopping at the very last entry. And that's where we get the length of the last, the last entry, like whether it's 10 entries or 500, um, piping this into a length node and into here, it'll just loop through that, that whole list. So once we do go through each one of those tables, uh, we have to pull the information out of those tables. We have to pull the 
tra- translation x y z rotation x y z and scale x y z out of those tables and use those values um, to position rotate and scale our, our brick asset so the next thing that we're going to do is create another node um, after this for loop which is going to be get data table row not get data table row names but just get data table row and you'll say none because we have to specify um, our data table so in this case it's going to be that data file again and what we're going to do is we have to then get our data out of that that row so in order to do this we have to get the row name. You can manually select which row we're going to load here, but we want that to automatically be selected as it loops through each entry in that, that list or in that data table. So we're just going to take our index and plug it into row name. We want to get the index of whatever row it's currently on and connect that to the row that we're going to pull information from. But we can't do that. It doesn't let us connect these two things because we have to do a conversion. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this index and we're going to convert it to string. So that's like to text. And then you can convert from text and directly pl plug it into this row name and it will do a conversion and convert that text back into a, a number. So that allows us to do a proper conversion from index to row name. We do a conversion to string and then you can connect that up here and it will automatically create a conversion, converting it back into a, a number. Now, the very last thing we have to do is take all those columns out of that row that store the information of translate X, Y, Z, rotate, and scale, and instance our objects to those positions. So if a row is found, we're going to add an instance. So add instance and add instance SM brick. We're going to add an instance of that brick. And now we have an add instance node. It's automatically going to se select our SM brick, or if you have any instance here in your blueprint. And that's going to be the item it's creating. And it's going to be placing it in wherever this instance transform is hooked up to. So how do we pull all those columns out of our row? Well, on this out row section here, we're going to do a break and it will automatically come up if you search break with break F underscore ISM data, which is our structure. And we'll get a list of all that info, all those columns that we have. And we'll break that all out and we'll connect it from here where we want to instance our brick to uh, we'll take this instance transform and we'll connect that to a make transform. And you'll get something like this with location, rotation, scale, which is great. But these are all bundled up in packages of kind of like three values instead of individually like it is here. Um, if that's the case, you can just right click on these and say split. And then it will break them into individual entries that you can connect as as well so that makes these now work together really nicely and we just connect them up id doesn't get used in in this case at all really so we'll just leave that blank uh, tx goes to location x um, ty location y tz location z rx rotation x r y rotation y rz rotation z scale x to scale X, scale Y to scale Y, scale Z to scale Z. Now this should all work. This is all we really need to do. The only thing that I'm going to mention that's a little bit important is if different softwares have different axis orientations, like Maya, the Y axis is up, whereas in Unreal, the Z axis is up. If that's the case, you might have to flip around some of these. Um, so in this case, if I'm exporting from Maya, uh, in Maya, the Y axis is up in Unreal, the Z axis is. So I have to connect transform Y to Z and the Z to Y. And can I just do a little bit of a, a flop there for it to work? So that's the only thing you have to keep uh, in consideration 
or keep in mind uh, if you are exporting from different softwares that have um, different axis orientations, like a different axis pointing upwards, that might be something you have to play around with. Um, but otherwise, this is kind of our blueprint that's going to read in those files that we exported um, from Blender or from Maya. So we can compile this, we see that there's no errors, we can save it, and then we can go test it out. So by clicking compile, it'll automatically uh, parse that data file and output our result in the viewport in our blueprint. So we can see that there's a brick here, or two bricks. Now just to make sure this whole workflow works and that everything is working correctly, I'm just going to save this blueprint and let's try exporting something a little bit more complex. So that structure that I had in Maya here, if we run our script, the one that we wrote for Blender and for Maya in the previous videos, uh, there we go, I click that button that exports it. Um, it's done exporting. I re-import that data file just so it updates all the values. And then my blueprint here, I can recompile it. So I'm going to click compile or just update it in any way. Like you can place it in your scene, it will probably update. And then we can check the viewport here and there we go. Exported all these instanced locations from Maya into Unreal. And now I can just take that. Here's my blueprint ISM loader. Everything's working. We just drop it into the scene and it drops in our really cool instant static mesh structure that would be very hard to, to build manually um, in Unreal. So that's really it. We now wrote ourselves a loader through a blueprint that can load our files from our exporters written for Maya and for Blender. Don't forget to like and subscribe and comment down below for if you run into any issues or if you um, have any other requests for videos. And also make sure to take a look at the Patreon links and the Discord links in the description down below. Uh, on the Patreon, if you are a member, again, you will get access uh, to a PDF that goes over all these steps uh, in detail uh, for reference and just for, for something that you can kind of have uh, for long term to refer back to.